All right, I'm here with Brad from Bush's Bobcat Service, and today we're going to be talking about maintenance on heavy equipment, whether that's a skid loader, front end loader, any type of heavy equipment, and then what to look for when you are in the market to purchase a used piece of equipment. So Brad, are you ready to take us through the steps? Yes. Let's, let's go. So we're gonna go into the Dan's uh, Lawn and Landscape Service shop. This is where Brad operates out of. And we're gonna be looking at, what machine are we gonna be looking at today, Brad? We're going to be looking at a Bobcat S205. An S205, okay, so come on in, let's check this out. So tell me a little bit about this particular machine. This is a used piece of equipment, correct? Yep. Okay, so this is the perfect thing for us to just to kind of go over. If you were in the market for a used Bobcat, what's the first thing that we would be looking for in this? Well, the first thing you're going to look for is any visible leaks on the outside of the machine if you're looking to, you know, purchase a used piece of equipment. The best thing to do is do a walk around, look at any of the cylinders, um, we can leave the rear door closed at this time, but you just walk around, look for any leaks. Of course, you're going to see some, looks like maybe possible oil leak, but if you look, it's just the grease from the grease being hot, you know, and then it, you know, of course, looks like it could possibly be an oil leak, which it's actually not. There's no drips or anything. Um, <clears throat> then you can look behind the wheels. Um, this is a pretty major one um, on a little bit older. Um, bobcats that don't look well maintained, you'll want to look for an axle seal leak. You can either look at it from behind or in front. If you do see that, I would suggest at that point you jack the machine up off the ground um, so you can isolate whatever wheel that might have that leak and then you can check and see if the bearings are out or if the bearings are going out, if the axle's loose. You know, you'll be able to move it in and out if the bearings are going out. Um, and if that's the case, you know, it's, it's going to be a pretty spendy repair because you're, <clears throat> you're going to want to do all four axles at that time. And uh, if you do find that, you may want to also come up to the front of the machine if you find axle seals leaking. Um, you can pull this front plug off. Pull this plug out. And all you need is a, a half inch drive ratchet. You can take that plug out, stick your finger in there, it should be about an inch down. Or what I do is just bend my finger down and the oil should be at the tip of my finger. If you have oil coming out of here, you probably have drive motors leaking or your chain case covers are leaking and you're getting water in there. Um, so let me ask you a question, Brad. What's the deal with this surface rust? Is that anything to even be no, concerned this is, about? This is pretty common on, you know, all bobcats after, you know, you can look at this one here. This one, I believe, is a 2010, um, and there's not much rust on there. You know, it's not a lot of surface rust. Where this one here, I believe, is a 2006 model year, so... And really, it has nothing to do. No, it's not going to affect. It's more aesthetic than yeah. anything. Because I've had, you know, I've sold a number of skid loaders and pieces of equipment, and we snow plow with them. Yeah. And for me, when I see surface rust like that, all that indicates to me is this machine snow plowed at some time. Right. On realistically, I would rather buy a machine that spent its whole life plowing snow than working in asphalt construction rubble getting beat up, getting cylinders bent, getting arms cracked, doing things like that. I'd rather have some surface rust that I can polish off and, and put a new paint job over than replacing any of the major components. Yeah, which, isn't, which isn't bad. You know, the snow plowing is rough if you don't have um, educated operators on snow plowing. I mean, if they snow plow and turn their bucket down, you know, and they're trying to scrape up ice or something, <clears throat> that'll usually bend these tilt cylinders when the guys do that, you know. So when they run them vertical almost? Straight yeah, up and down, when they run them straight to... up down and they're trying to scrape ice, yeah. it's not good, or they, or they pick the machine up, you know, they'll pick the front tires up off the ground, thinking that they're putting more weight on the ground, which they're not. And then they push forward? And then they push forward and it bends them cylinders. And Okay. So you try staying away from that, um, but the surface rust doesn't, uh, isn't, doesn't gonna affect anything on the machine. You know, 
was just that. So what's the next things we're going to be looking for? Um, then the next thing is you're coming around the machine. You can look at the bobtatch pins and bushings, um, tilt cylinder pins and bushings. If you just grab the bobtatch, if you have it laid out like this, just grab the bobtatch. And on this one here, you can see that the tilt cylinder pins probably should be replaced. Um, but the bobtatch pins itself, you can see that it's barely moving. Um, this machine is a well-maintained machine. I've maintained this one since it's been brand new, including that one too, same thing. And it's got 1,800 hours on it with, this will be the first time that the tilt cylinder pins will be changed on it. So, I mean, that's pretty good. You can tell that this machine hasn't been beat. Um, then you can go on the inside of the machine or open up the door. Um, you know, you'll want to look at the hours. If you hit the headlight key, the headlight button, that'll give you the hours. The hours will come up on uh, the side of the machine here, and it'll give the hours. Um, this one's actually 1,900 hours. Um, but what you're saying is universal for all right. all bobcats. All bobcats. All, no, I, and I well, don't say bobcats, skid steers. Really, skid steers. We've, we've got to define that. You want to check the hours because they're not all going to have that control panel. They're right. going to have different. Type. Even bobcats are going to have right. different. Different from the, the F or the C, F, G, K, M. Right. You know they all are. A little but bit the different. main components that you're talking about are universal enough right. that we want right. to make sure you're going to check your your seals yep. on it. You're going to check your. your yep pins in the front. Oh, okay. And are. all the new machines also from the from the G series on, you can check for any service codes or any uh, you know if there's a sensor or something out, the Bobcat will prompt you to what's out. So you can look at that to see if, if that if the code history is clear. Okay. You know, so you'll know if you have any problems electrically that are visible electric you know, electrical problems. And then of course just come back around to the other side and again looking for leaks, you know, don't see anything, machine looks good. Then we can come to the back and, uh, and open up the back door and now you're in the engine compartment and uh, you know, you can check the oil, make sure that the oil level is good, perfect on this machine. Um, what about clean oil versus dirty oil? What does that tell you? Well, about? on a diesel engine, it's you're not gonna you're gonna have your clean oil, you know, for the, about the first hour, you know, okay. and then it's gonna be <laughs> and then it's gonna be black. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of either it having hours or the date um, on that part of it. You know, make sure that it's a fairly recent service. You know, so you kind of know that the guys maybe maintain it a little bit. You can take off the uh, air filter housing. Um, you can check the air filter, you know, make sure the guy's not running it with a plugged air filter. Um, yeah, I don't know, remember when the, looks like I changed this one not too long ago. But of course you're gonna have, you know, the dirt and dust here at the beginning of the filter. You know, you can just wipe that out. And then you can also squeeze this little piece to get any of the extra dirt out. I mean, some big indicators that this right. machine has absolutely no TLCs if you find a, mice, a mouse right. nest in there. A or mouse nest. High needles yeah. or whatever. You know, those are typically things that right. you find for somebody that if they tell you, yeah, we service this thing, and you open this up and you find that it's it's cake full of stuff, you know that it's not something anymore. isn't driving right. at that point. And then you know anybody can write hours on a filter, so you got to you got to have to. How do well, you you're going to know simply because if you if you pull out the dipstick and you got oil dripping like this, you know it's probably pretty good. Okay. If it's the consistency of tar, yeah, you're probably going to want to stay away from the machine. Mm -hmm. um, so what about what about like blow by or, or yes. things like that? What are those? Um, is there ways of checking that to make sure you got a good machine? There is. Um, like on this bobcat right here is the, the blow by tube, okay. which is right here. Now you can look in this blow by tube and this is going to tell you like there's nothing there. I mean it's, it's, what, what, what would you find if there was? I you mean, would, if you would, if you had a bad um, cylinder, you know, bad rings or possibly bad valves, um, something that was allowing the oil 
pressure to reach the top of the cylinder head, it would be blowing that oil okay. out that blow-by tube, okay. and you would get smoke and oil, you know, droplets okay. coming out. Okay. And you know that's something you'll look at, you know, because you'll look for oil leaks on the machine, you know, in the inside you know. of the engine, right? But, well, but some of that could be uh, maybe a hose or something that leaks. In. Well, it could be. Um, you know, it could be a turbo line leaking, um, but you're going to know the general vicinity of where it's leaking. Valve cover gaskets, you can look at, at, at that type of stuff when you're looking for a new one. Um, and most, like the valve cover, I mean, that's something most people would be able to install themselves. Um, but the uh, engine blow by, you, most people won't be able to repair that by themselves. It'll have to come into a shop. Um, what about the battery? Is that even something to be worried um, about or concerned about, or doesn't that? Really I, I guess you thing? can, but you can know by just jumping in and starting the machine. But it is a battery, so I mean, every two years, you know, you should probably be putting a battery in anyway. One of the things I want to point out that Brad didn't mention when you were in the inside of the machine, one of the things that I look at is the seat. And the seat, I don't look at it because I care where my butt rests. I care because it's an indicator how many actual hours are on the machine. Because when you when you have um, a brand new seat and it's a seat will I mean I, I guess the way I'm trying to say it, Brad, is a seat will indicate how hard the machine's been used and where how right. old it is in right. case anything has been changed. Because if you see a wore out seat and it's ripped and tore and somebody's telling you the machine's got 900 hours on it, it's not driving. Plain and simple. Well. It depends because if like uh, me as a mechanic, if I'm jumping in and out with like wrenches in my pocket, screwdriver in my pocket, I mean you, you know, you could have an accident and tear the seat or something. Right. So. But if, but a machine with two, three, four thousand hours, we usually, especially four thousand hours, we usually be you're pretty gonna, tore up. You're gonna see a lot of problems come at four thousand hours. You're gonna see a machine. If you see a machine with four thousand hours on it, you might want to look that one over a little bit. Okay. A little bit closer. Because that's about yeah. when they become problematic. Yeah. At that time. Through. Yeah, right. Okay. So, and you're going to look at, uh, you know, the condition of the drive belt um, and the alternator belt, cooling belt. Um, this one has a hydraulic fan, so it doesn't have a fan belt. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, you can check the coolant level, check for any coolant leaks up around the back. I mean, you'll be, if you look down in here, you'll be able to see if there's any coolant leaks. Um, you can check the oil cooler. You can check them seals, make sure that there's not oil around there. They're clean. The coolant level in the bottom, in the bottle there. Now, we have, we're, we're lucky because right now we have two different machines here with two different styles of tracks. And sometimes when you're looking at purchasing a used piece of equipment, you may find a machine that has tracks and that may be the motivator of why you're interested in purchasing that machine. Can we look at the yep. tracks and also how each set of tracks could possibly affect the machine? Because I know there's a set of steel tracks over there and I know those steel tracks are tough on equipment. So let's look at, let's look at these rubber tracks here and what would we want to look at to tell us whether we got a good set of rubber tracks or we have something that maybe is in need of replacement? Well. You know, there's, it's really, I mean, there's, if you look at these tracks, uh, like I said, they, these got 1,900 hours on them, but these are, you know, ran by Dan, um, so it's basically just one, two, maybe three different operators are ever in this machine, mm -hmm. um, so it's taken care of, um, so the tread is still good. So that, that set of tracks has 1,900 hours on it? Yes. Does he use those to plow in the yes. time? He does. He keeps that on a snow yes. plow. Because that you won't typically find a set of tracks in that. Well, you see them like this because there's only, there's myself and one other operator that would run this machine. Um, so, you know, they're not beat up. So what we're looking at is we don't see any major cuts or tears. Right. Or I mean, there is. We've got some of these, some separation, but that's pretty typical right. just of age. Uh, yeah, really. well, of Goodyear tracks, too. I mean, but none of them are real deep for the hours on these tracks. I mean, they're, they're decent. Um, we have had to change tires. Um, so I think this is actually the second set of tires in here. Um, 
So let's go look at these steel tracks over here. But the, the rubber tracks here, I would say these one, these are the best to have. Um, if you're not going to buy a designated track machine, put rubber tracks on. Um, put rubber tracks on. They do a lot less damage on the yard. Oh, um, I, I, I have both. I have, I have a dedicated track machine, rubber track over the tire, rubber track, steel tracks. I'm gonna tell you, I like steel tracks. See, I like the steel tracks for dirt work if okay. you're just going to be on dirt. If you're just going to be on dirt, they're okay. Um, I, I don't like what they do to the machine. What I've noticed, and I love the results, I love the handling of my over the tire rubber tracks, and these, I call them chompers. These things chomp through the dirt when you need traction, when you need, yeah, they're good for that. But what happens is, is these tracks get loose, like, right. we, like we see right here. They're, they can pop up and they can grab uh, something like this. They can grab an edge of a machine if you're not safe. Well, any gussets, you know, they'll, they'll catch. They'll catch and then they'll pop. They'll either, they'll either pop the track. When I say pop, you, you, you may not see it pop off, but what you're going to do Well, I mean, you can remedy that, that by just... Ram. You know, you can remedy it by tightening the tracks, you know, or make sure that your machine has the correct spacer on there. I mean, you can get from half inch to two inch spacers um, to put in there, so maybe you need to add a little bit more spacers. So, so that's an important point, Dan, because what happens is, is you're going to be operating and then the tracks themselves will somehow start to get loose. Right. You well, you got, you got your tire wear. Yep. I mean, these are loose just basically since, because we put these on when we had new tires on. Yep. Um, and these tires have gone through three winters now. So, <laughs> three winters on those tires? Well, of course, last winter didn't come. So. Right, <laughs> last, last winter didn't come. We plowed, um, what, four or five? Well, yeah, because yeah, this is the, the 2010, so since this machine's been brand new, it, this is still its original set of tires. Um, and I, I guess I can, I can tell you the hours if I was to get oh, the machine. But the, uh, you know, this machine here is only ran by two people. This will be ran by Dan and by myself. So, there. So just be careful. When you're buying a machine with steel tracks, things to look for, and that's the point where he came over here. We're not here to pick on your machine or anything, but this is just a great example of when a track gets loose like this, it can pop up and you can you need to look for right. any any bending on the frames or bending on the tracks themselves correct so um and it happens to to everybody i mean my steel tracks they get right. loose like this then we've got to stretch them we've got to get a stretcher out we've got to pull them right. together and then we've got to yeah i mean it's, yeah, it's just, yeah it's just little little holes so they just you pop this bolt out and, and you can tighten it up in. yeah so you want to make sure you've got a good set tight set of tracks on there right and, you know, a lot of little things indicate how well the piece of equipment's been taken care sure. of. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can tell that on, on different machines. So, you know, I mean, I don't know what else. But. Awesome. Is there anything else you would look for if you were purchasing a piece of equipment? Well, of course, you're going to want to start the machine up. And if you could, if the customer's okay with it, take it with the bucket on and maybe run up against something hard. Make sure that the machine will spin its tires, you know, so you'll know that the, you know, if you, as long as you check the dry belt, so you know the dry belt's tight. And if it can't spin its tires, you're probably getting, you know, maybe a weak drive motor or a motor that could be bypassing some oil somewhere, bad sealing or something. So. Okay, so that's a great indicator. Um, what happens if you're just driving down the road and you notice it kind of pulling to one side? Well, that is usually just a steering adjustment or a you know the bushings could be worn big thing little thing um it depends how far it's drifting from right to left um you know it's not that big of a thing but if you have your machine stop with the parking brake off and the machine wants to spin circles then it's a big thing okay okay um okay so, and one of the other things too I want to bring up, Brad, is these two pieces of equipment don't have dedicated tracks. And when you have something with over the tire tracks like that, and it's going to be used extensively for over the tire tracks, is it typical to take off a set of drive chains on a Bobcat? Yes, you'll want to uh, take the front drive chains or rear drive chains, whatever your preference is. But typically the front drive chains come off um, you can leave the front on, but then you're going to run into problems with putting new bearings in, new races, new chains, because everything's going to be stretched.
to the max. And so I want to clarify what exactly we're talking about. There's four drive chains. Oh on, yes, on yep. the skid loaders, front for one for each set of tires, yep. right? And when you put tracks on like this, let's go look at this. Well, there's a front, a front set and a rear set. Okay. And so you've got the sets, and what happens is now when you have the tight, the, the wheels hooked together and operating together, they're actually competing against each other at that point, aren't they? Well, they're not really competing against each other, but it's uh, basically the tension of the track and the tension of the chains, there's no giving it anymore. I mean, it's like pulling it together, and it... Uh, puts a strain on the drive chains. So if you go ahead and you're looking for a piece of equipment or you have a, a machine and you take the front drive chains off because you don't want to throw out your bearings and you take the, the tracks off, you've got a rear wheel drive machine that you're going to have one hell of a time steering. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, the easiest way to do it is I just always take the bucket, you can push it down and then you just drive backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is Tricks there? of the trade. <laughs> is the best way to do it. You can kind of get around. Okay, so. but don't be surprised. So if you come into a machine like this and you see it, you know, it has tracks on it and those drive chains have been disabled, some people like to do that, some don't. I've seen it's, it done both ways. And it's very difficult to get the track on with the both sets of chains on too. Okay. I mean, it is, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer. So. And one of the things too with tracks, I'm sure most people are familiar with, but to those that aren't, when you have an over the tire track like this, you can't adjust it like you can with a steel track. There is zero adjustment. So the, the way you keep the tracks, thanks, thanks Brad, <laughs> yeah. appreciate that. The way you keep the tracks tight is air pressure and tread on the tires themselves. So you gotta have good tread on these tires and the tires have to be fully inflated or you're gonna lose, you're gonna get some a dip in the-, in the Right, well what happens on, on the rubber tracks is most guys get sand or if they're in clay, real wet, sticky clay, the clay will get in there, run up inside the tire, and then the tracks will pop off, or people even jump a rock in there, you know, and run the rock up inside and okay. pop the track off. Cowboy out. That's what we call it. Cowboy out. It's when you're driving and you're going a little bit too fast, you're turning a little bit too much, you're not being careful with your tracks, you'll pop a set of tracks off out on the job site, or if you're on asphalt, and you're turning and the track sticks and the machine still wants to turn, you can, you can drive right out, out of a set of tracks. It happens right. to the best of us. Well, that's why I always tell people when they do that, if they're on the asphalt with them, you want to turn with your bucket. I always just put the bucket down a little bit of pressure just to lift the front of the track off. Okay. The front tire up just a little bit and you turn on the asphalt. So very good. So just spin around. All right. And then that'll save the popping off on the asphalt part. Well, we are in Dan's shop with landscape and snow removal services. So Dan was nice enough to let us come into his shop and, and um, shoot this video. Brad with Bush's Bobcat service was nice enough to walk us through uh, what to look for when we're looking at new equipment. And I want to thank you for your time today, Brad. Appreciate it. Any last uh, thoughts before we let you get back to work? Nope, that should be it. I think uh, any questions, I can give me a call. Appreciate it, Brad. Thank you. Thank you.